David Yermak, very much welcome. Uh, we've had a seminar on, on blockchain. What is blockchain? A blockchain is a database that has been around for about 25 years and organizes data very differently than the T accounts and ledgers that you're used to. It arranges records in a sequence and it uses a type of cryptography called a hash code that allows you to see if any data has been changed. It's a real breakthrough that I think is probably as significant to business as the arrival of double entry bookkeeping five or six hundred years ago. I think this is going to improve the way financial data is tracked and ultimately replace many jobs and lead to the reorganization of many companies in the financial markets. Okay. In, in what ways will it change financial markets? The real point of blockchains are to eliminate the need for a middleman to certify or ratify transactions. Such as a bank? Such as a bank, a credit card payments processing company. Um, you probably won't need auditors, at least not as many auditors, to authenticate the integrity of the data. It puts markets much more on a peer-to-peer -peer basis mm -hmm. where the user and the seller can deal with each other directly and maybe not need any middleman to intermediate the transaction. Okay. So the role that has been played for centuries by banks and clearing houses, more recently by credit card companies, is very open to reconsideration. And I think many markets may redesign themselves and bypass the middleman altogether. You've seen other industries where the peer-to-peer -peer business model, such as distribution of music, or the ride sharing or the hotel industry with Airbnb, it's been very disruptive to the old institutions that have been in the market for a long time. And I think blockchain's beginning to do the same thing in financial services. It sounds, cutting out middlemen sounds like it might be cheaper. Will it be better in, in other ways than cutting costs? The middleman is always somebody who is a gatekeeper, often a monopolist that controls access to the markets and somebody who may charge for their services in a way that exploits their position as a gatekeeper or a bottleneck in the network. So one thing that you may get with blockchains is much greater financial inclusion where mm -hmm. people can participate in the financial system without being invited by a bank or ratified by a credit agency. You may see far fewer fees to pay transactions across borders. And the speed and reliability of the data, and above all, the security of the data. Cyber security has been a huge problem in the financial markets, and blockchains appear to solve many of the problems of identity theft and hacking that have become almost routine in the big banks that are in the markets. Okay, will it affect more sectors than just the financial sector, or is it the financial sector phenomenon we are talking about? I don't think it's limited at all to finance. In fact, some of the biggest applications are probably in other sectors of the economy. So a blockchain, if you think of it as a better database. Anything tracked on a database in principle might be tracked more securely and more cheaply, more accurately on a blockchain. So this might include data for shipping, goods in transit, okay. logistics, healthcare, medical, educational records government databases of ownership of things like real estate and automobiles, uh, border security data, migration data, and so forth. All these things have been proposed as candidates for blockchain tracking. And I think in all these cases, they could in principle lead to the total reconfiguration of government agencies okay. or companies in the shipping business, medical companies, and so forth. The potential here is really very large. Okay. Is this science fiction? Are we talking about something happening 50 years from now? Or it's already or what's happening. The speed? I think this is moving more quickly than people realize that in industries such as shipping, you're seeing some of the very biggest companies like Maersk already introduce very large scale uses of this. Um, in retail trade, there are companies like Walmart in the US experimenting with this for food safety. Um, in the finance and insurance industry, some of the very big players are beginning to issue their own investment securities on blockchains or to write smart contract insurance policies on blockchains. There seem to be every week more and more examples of well-known companies finding ways to apply this technology. Mm -hmm. And I think many of them are worried about upstart companies disrupting their regular business. And so there's very much a race mentality that we need to get there faster than the entrepreneurial 
challenger gets there. Many companies worried about essentially protecting their businesses and using this as a defensive thing to, to safeguard against disruption from outside entrepreneurs. So it's any, anything but science fiction, really. It's oh, this a, is very real. It's very and real. It's, it's happening already, and it's not so much that the consumer will see it as that people are likely to see this in their work. Mm -hmm. And you know, many companies, especially in finance, are totally changing the profile of the people they recruit and how things like their back office systems are being put together and functioning. And I think that the impact on the labor market in the long run is going to affect almost everybody in terms of what their jobs look like and the skills that they need to earn a good wage. David Yormick, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.